Guild of Dark Steel is a short story driven action adventure game set in a world held together by ancient sleeping gods. Developed by Igor Sandman and published by Digirati, it harkens back to platform adventures of old. But is this a flashback we want or need? Let's find out. The Dark Steel is a mysterious armor which, once adorned, can never be removed. Its wearers are immortals who complete tasks for the guild for hollow coins. Set in the grim town of Ravenrock, you play as a member of the guild referred to by most merely as a sellsword. Dialogue is text-based and there's plenty of it. Most individuals in Ravenrock will have something to say, but I didn't feel there was quite the depth promised on the eShop with the living, breathing world and each character having this deep story. I just didn't really get that. The tales are interesting, but I think Deep might be a bit of a reach. The overarching story is a little disjointed, with a monstrous presence wanting to push its way in, very similar to an early Stranger Things episode. Yeah, think Stranger Things meets Highlander, and we're almost there. Perhaps with a little less uh, Scottish Sean Connery, though. I was excited to see references such as Flashback, which I absolutely loved, among the inspirations for the game. And I can certainly see it in part. You control your character with the left stick, jumping and climbing vertically if needed. I had hoped this would then translate into some tricky platforming segments, but that's simply not the case. Perplexingly, you can't jump even the smallest gap in the game. There simply isn't an animation to grab the other side and continue, or to clear the space. You just fall down when you try. It's frankly an odd omission and makes jumping sideways essentially completely redundant. Climbing up or down is fine, but other than that, this isn't a platformer. Combat takes an interesting approach. When you engage an enemy, you will enter an instance of sorts. You'll have various combos that you can execute, but you'll need to parry any time an enemy readies up a move. The parry window is slightly different for each one, but once learned, that's it. There are six different move combos to unlock, but these are tied to a leveling system that makes no sense. You defeat an enemy that drops these blue crystals, and every four or so you can then level up one of your combos, but you aren't given any indication as to what leveling them up does. I assume it increased damage, but you'd have thought that using the technique I did, leveling just one of them, by the end of the game, you'd be blasting enemies away like dragon punches to the face, but no dice. It simply did not provide the player enough feedback and as such made leveling feel arbitrary. Also by its conclusion, you'll be fighting certain enemies literally with your eyes closed because their move patterns don't ever change. Three hits, a block, two hits, rinse and repeat, and then do the same thing for every other enemy of that type. It is, to be a little harsh, boring. Early on I was excited at the prospect, but the realization that each of that type of enemy would do the exact same moveset made moving through the world a bit of a grind. There are other systems at play that also don't make much sense. You earn those hollow gold coins through the guild, but never have an outlet to spend them. What's the point? Then there's the backtracking with respawning enemies to prolong what's already a reasonably short few hours of gameplay, and the charm really began to fade. It's a shame, because this isn't a bad game, but it's built on some flawed systems that aren't overly enjoyable. There's a great atmosphere here, and some of the exposition combined with audio is captivating. It just doesn't tie everything together. There's no run button as well. Come on. That's not a run. That's a slightly hyperactive saunter. Gameplay is repetitive, but is saved from being bad by some decent writing and exposition. It scores 12 out of 20, while controls are lacking. They score 10 out of 20. I personally enjoy this drab art style. In a strange way, it reminded me of Future Wars from back in the day as opposed to flashback. Animations are all on the smaller scale, but again, the size of the team, I believe being one man, is shown in the need for asset recycling, enemy variety, and backdrop variety as well. It's a testament to him, though, that he's made something with this much atmosphere, and I think much of that is down to the audio. The score is macabre, for want of a better word. makes you feel uneasy and never quite settled. And that extends, I think, to the whole game. It's a jarring blow then when the battle music starts for the hundredth time. It has such a short repetitive loop 
I would challenge any player not to become infuriated by it eventually. Such a shame for something that shouldn't really be an issue. If it faded into the audio, it wouldn't be so bad, but you're thrust into it and also moved on screen to a new position and boom, the same music starts. Same combo from the player, totally locked in experience. They die. Next, I give the visuals 14 out of 20 overall and perhaps that's a tad generous. Music's decent, but the battle music dragged me down mentally. It scored 13 out of 20. The game will set you back £13.49 or your regional equivalent. Now despite the issues, if I found this one on a steep discount, I might be inclined to forgive its misgivings. At the price though, mm, not so much. It's essentially the same price as Hollow Knight, for goodness sakes, and it's going to take you around about 3 or 4 hours to finish tops, much of which can feel repetitive. I give value 8 out of 20. Well there we have it, unfortunately Guild of Dark Steel misses the mark for me. There is potential here but it never comes together quite right. I do look forward to this developer's next project though. There is something here that he has that's difficult to capture, perhaps it's that atmosphere. Overall though it scores a switch up score of 57%. Thanks guys, thanks for this one and to the developer and publisher for the review copy. Let me know down in the comments what you think of it and as always a big thanks to all of you who watch the channel. Thanks to our patrons who support us each and every month. And as always, for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!